Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day in Nairobi. Welcome to another exciting, exciting episode of Digital Dada Podcast. I'm Cecilia Maundu. I'm a broadcast journalist. I'm a digital security trainer, and I work at the intersection of technology, journalism, and human rights. And today we have Gen Zs in the house. It's their time, it's their season, and we have to give them the space for them to tell us, first of all, where they get this energy from, because we also want to tap into this energy, especially us who are millennials. So welcome to this episode where we're going to, we're still uh, Cyber Security Month. So we just want to talk about their online safety, how they share their information, how they can um, take part in the issue of fact checking and how they can counter misinformation. And in the studio today, I have two lovely ladies. Yes, it's always nice when you have like a whole uh, female uh, panel. So yes, and I'm going to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Yes. Let's start with you. Hi, everyone. My name is Faith Mwangi. I'm a member of International Young Catholic Students. It's a movement, very dynamic, holding uh, and com uh, comprising of a lot of students, both in universities, high schools. And I'm very happy to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rose Wendy, and I work for Africa Youth Trust, and I'm glad to be here. So welcome to Digital Data Podcast, the leading podcast in Africa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> let me start. Uh, uh, all of you on social media. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So we, ha we have the right uh, people on board. So what type of personal information, I'll start with you, Mwangi. What type of personal information do you share online? And how do you decide what's safe to share and what's not safe to share? Mm-hmm. I think for me, it depends with exactly what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. If it comes to jobs, uh, when applications or um, conversation with friends, it's very categorical. So if I'm applying for jobs, um, I will have to give the data that I'm being asked for. But at the same time, I have to make sure even if I'm in a job site and I've seen a particular job and I'm... I'm interested in it. I have to go to the official website for the company. That's good. Yeah, and make sure the job really exists because I've come, I've come across a jobs that are on web, are on job sites, but are not on mm -hmm. the official company's mm -hmm. websites. So I have to confirm. If uh, most in most circumstances, the official websites have all details you're supposed to give. They are very comprehensive. The details are well written and very clear. So I make sure I give in exactly what I'm asked for. And if something is fishy, I have to really go and investigate about it other than just giving out my information like that. Yeah, And that's very, very important because also, uh, as you say, you go to the official website because yeah. there are so many scammers out there. Mm -hmm. And because of so, also desperation, especially young people like you who are now in the looking for uh, for jobs, it's important to go to the website, find out, because you could be actually sharing your very personal information with a fake website. Mm -hmm. And that's how you go through the issue of hacking, you know, phishing and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, to you. When it comes to the issue of sharing information, mm -hmm. I just want you to have a take on what is your take on the issue of oversharing, especially when it comes to social media uh, platform. And that habit is very common with young people. Um, I'm one of those people who used to overshare. I would put everything on social media and, and we have very different social media platforms. So a lot of my information would be out there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm out there and somebody met me and told me something about myself, I would, yeah, I would likely believe them because everything is out there. But then we had the training um, on digital safety with IYSO and yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and right now I'm very cautious with what I put out there. I've had to delete quite a number of things on there. And I feel like it's very important for us to understand there is a lot of danger with oversharing as young people. There are a lot of predators out there and a lot. A lot. And it's not just the people we, 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 we always assume that it's a celebrity who would go through 
certain situations or certain problems, we forget that we ourselves could be targets mm -hmm. of even uh, stolen identities. You could have accounts that have my face, my information, but it's not me, it's somebody else. So in regards to safety, I would say we really need to be careful with what we're putting out there. We need to be conscious as well and just learn what to do and what not to do especially when it comes to social media. And I, I like um, what you said that uh, before you used to overshare, but now you're more cautious of the information that you put online because somebody can piece, uh, put, uh, pick pieces and pieces of your information and they can actually be able to get so much of your information without uh, your knowledge. Yeah. So let me follow up on a question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced a situation where you regretted sharing something online and what did you learn from the experience? Yes, I, <laughs> I have. I have. Mm -hmm. I learned to be very private <laughs> with things that I go through. Mm -hmm. Um I would put everything, like I would go for an interview, for a job interview, and then be like, this is me prepping for this. And, you know, yeah. I really regret that now. Mm -hmm. um, what I've learned from that uh, situation is just, I don't have to put everything there. People don't have to know everything about me. It, I, it's just not necessary. Yeah. Okay, it's true because um also something you said there's and I've seen this a lot in trainings whereby somebody asks you I'm not famous I'm not a celebrity so why would somebody want to hack you mm -hmm. and I keep saying that uh, privacy is not about something to hide it's about something to protect whether you're famous or not that is your information and it should not be in anyone other hand apart from you mm -hmm. so back to you uh why do you think digital safety is important for young people like yourself in today's world especially now the way you've talked about your organization it sounds so diverse and you know like i didn't know you also deal with high school students mm -hmm. you know i thought it's only college yes can you please repeat the question yeah. what do you think why do you think digital safety is important for young people in today's world mm -hmm. yeah. The world is becoming a global village. It is a global village. Um, you can connect with anyone, anywhere. And years to come, we will be dealing with a lot of things, processes in technology. Um, I think right now, cyberbullying, cyber attacks, things that are happening. We've experienced phishing, vishing. You know, quishing. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's just a lot of issues. Yes. <laughs> and with all of this, with this evolution, I think young people should be taught. We should have um, spaces where we can talk about technology and space, online space, mm -hmm. because a time will come where let me let me refer to something that was happening quite a while back. Uh, during the demonstration, the Gen Z demonstration, mm -hmm. there are a lot of politicians who are actually saying that someone has called them, mm -hmm. someone who they do not know who he or she is and, you know, such stuff. I think people are becoming intelligent yeah. and we Gen Zs are learned. Mm -hmm. the, the lack of job opportunities is... Taking a toll on people. Exactly. So they are trying to put their knowledge into this space and teaching even kids, because nowadays kids have these phones, teaching them on how to deal with the gadgets, to talk to you as a parent or a big sister, a relative about what is happening is going to be helpful mm -hmm. because nowadays there is sexual exploit, and especially among kids, yeah. teenagers. And even small kids, I've experienced someone doing that with small kids mm -hmm. and it's not nice. So I think this space should be broader. Yeah. It should encompass everyone because most of the time we think that these things happen with adults. Mm -hmm. We forget children. Mm -hmm. So if, and the good thing about it is with learning about it, people have been exposed to what to do. You know, there are a lot of things you can do password management, uh, uh, parental control. These are things that people should be educated about and we should encompass everybody. Yeah. You say something very profound, children. Yeah. 
it's you know i i i do lots of trainings and you find there are a lot of parents in trainings you know and you talk to them you tell them you have to talk about online safety with your children mm-hmm. right now the biggest cyber crime is Uh, child pornography yeah you understand mm-hmm. yeah and some parents unfortunately you know the way parents say oh my children are more technology enabled than me this is not for me now at the same time you find like these children are accessing information that they're not uh, supposed to so that's mm-hmm. very profound mm-hmm. and you take me you led me to my other to my other question uh, which is uh, i'll come to you how do you manage your online accounts do you use strong passwords for each account how often do you change them um i try and change them as often as i can i have different passwords for different things i stopped which is very good yeah i stopped the password password and 1 2 3 4 5 <laughs> and the the birthday and all of that yeah. uh, because i realized it's it's very easy to for someone to access my information uh, i did have a scare one time with one of my accounts when someone tried to access and it was it wasn't because they were that smart at least that's what i think it was just because my um passwords weren't as secure as i thought they were so i try and change them as often as i can um i manage them and yeah i try using different combinations just to be safe and that's that's very important you know password sounds so simple but it is your first line of defense, of defense. Yeah. so it's mm-hmm. usually very critical and we keep saying like oh, your password has to be strong and when we talk about a strong password we're talking a password that is alpha numerical it has different characters mm-hmm. and i also tell people you can use pass phrases you can use your mother tongue mm-hmm. to create a password which yeah. makes it more strong and also every account has to have a different password and for a password to it like a toothbrush you change it after and six it's... months well some people change it after one year but it's supposed to be <laughs> six, six months, months. <laughs> but and then you don't share it with anyone yeah. also additionally if you can change after three months you know especially if uh, you handle information people's information you also have to be very sensitive uh, about that so um you talked about the world being a global uh, village So how do you handle online interactions with people you don't know and what precautions do you take? So first and foremost mm-hmm. I limit conversations with people I do not aware of which is very important. That is very important. But like I said it mm-hmm. also depends with the space you are at mm-hmm. because if you're a leader you have to talk to many people if you are an influencer or such you have to really communicate with a lot of people but um first and foremost when you i think initiating a conversation with someone you should first understand who they are because i've come across someone texting me and telling me tulipatana i've never been there i'm like how did you get my number ulinipatia okay so with that It's good to be polite because at some point probably they mistook a number mm. it happens but uh, I think you should limit your conversation or if there some is someone who is in need of your help or you're in need of their help have a proper introduction who are you how do I know you and if I do not know you how do I relate to where you're working or maybe yeah what is the connection it's very important don't just blatter out because nowadays things are happening people mm-hmm. call you from safaricom safaricom mm-hmm. you yes, know yes. and other places so yeah so and uh, that um, leads me uh, to my next uh, question uh, i think it's you who talked about cyberbullying yeah. and uh, the issue of online violence it's called tech facilitated gender based violence So um I would like I would just like to know like how would you handle an issue of cyberbullying cyberbullying yeah so it depends with also the scope scope is very important there's something you can deal with as an individual and there's there are some things that are beyond you so in life it's good to have an accountability person because if it's something you can deal by yourself I you just block the person or mm. maybe fantastic privacy setting mm-hmm. you set your 
a system program with a you know every program every app software has a privacy setting the, pl- the social media platforms yes mm. so you can also use that and if it's beyond you talk to someone mm. because some of these things really really they lower someone's self esteem there are people who do not have boundaries you know mm. and it's happening and you see it's been taken as something that is is a normal scenario yeah it's mm. been normalized yeah normalized because someone might come up with a clip and the comments down there it's like okay that's yeah. not nice but people are like we are telling you the truth mm. it's your problem <laughs> you know yeah those are the things we should really look like so for me if it's something i can deal with based on my boundaries and my scope i will if it's something i cannot deal with i'll have to talk to somebody yeah so cyberbullying how do we educate people especially young people on the issue of cyberbullying because it's very very rampant and as you said some people feel like it's fun and games but when you talk to the victims it's a very harrowing experience you know like you know people make it like all fun and games and it is not you know people hide under the veil of the veil of freedom of expression in the name of abuses and all that so how do we educate the people that you guys are dealing with because they are the most active online mm-hmm. and unfortunately also they are the ones who engage so much on this issue of cyberbullying now it's called tech facilitated uh, gender based violence mm-hmm. so i think first and foremost you should identify social places where this a specific age group gather can be in the church uh clubs mm-hmm. sports yes identify those places mm-hmm. and then liars with people who have the info because we do not know it all it's true and let the info be broken down in a way that any age group can understand it doesn't matter whether it's a 10 year old or a 18 year old so you of course you have to group them according to their age mm-hmm. um but that is one then that the another thing i would recommend is having seminars and workshops for people who can gather uh together have someone their age someone older make it diverse mm-hmm. talk to them about these things and if possible if there is there are resources let them interact one on one with the resource mm. the only problem is in africa we do have power issues mm. internet issues and of course gadgets they are not all youths can it's true afford gadgets mm-hmm. so those are things sh- that should be considered but once you identify a place where they gather and then liars with people who have the info come up with seminars workshops things even activities activities team building mm-hmm. can help can because help. you just have to make sure that the info and the team building align mm-hmm. you can actually teach through fun Mm. I know it's very possible. Yeah, so just identify those places. Yeah, circling back to something you said on the issue of um privacy settings. It's always important to tighten your social media uh, privacy settings and by that we mean making sure you embrace something we call two factor authentication because yeah. uh, all uh, literally all the social media platforms now have that. We also say do not accept friends requests from people you don't know uh being careful of the information you share mm-hmm. and also there's something called community guidelines looking at the community guidelines of the platforms uh that that you are on and making sure also you change your password uh as necessary as possible so uh to you you deal with uh, very young people right yes, yes. So in your opinion how can school parents or youth groups better support young people in protecting themselves uh online um one thing we do as Africa Youth Trust is try to empower young people and and sometimes that involves giving them information and that's why we work with uh organizations like IOICSO mm-hmm. um we we try as much as possible to encourage yeah um, parents and teachers to have these conversations with young kids because we've we've seen 
a lot of very bad things mm. happening online with our children. Um, and so, yeah, we, we really try to encourage having the, the discussions in, our, in the schools, uh, the trainings. We, we, we advocate uh, for that, you know, openness because we've realized a lot of parents, just like you said, they really try to, you know, we're not about tech. We don't know. But kids are very well informed. They have access to information and things. Um, you'd be very surprised. And sometimes people feel like, because my child doesn't have a phone, they're safe. <laughs> you don't know what they're doing yeah, outside so, there. Yeah. Um, and so it's very important for people to have discussions on such things. We've seen predators uh, targeting children. And the funny thing is, you know, these children don't have phones. And so you wonder, how were you able to talk to this stranger and agree on a place to meet and you don't have access to, you know, a phone? But they do. So I feel like we we, we really try to have those conversations in their schools. We try to have um, uh, the trainings whenever we are allowed to and just have those conversations there and encourage them to be safe. Stranger danger <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Um, there's a writer who said there's no better time to be alive than now because mm -hmm. of the internet. Uh, like it, heals, it offers massive uh, opportunities, you know. Young people are making crazy money, you know. At the same time, it's wasting a lot of people's time. Mm -hmm. You find somebody who's been on TikTok for hours in a day, you know, especially for the people who like TikTok, you know. So how can we also um, educate the youth to take advantage of the opportunities, you understand, mm -hmm. that are offered by the internet? Because you can either decide to waste your time or you can either decide actually this a platform can give me so much resources how can I take advantage of them mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be like starting a business but you know doing an online course right now I'm learning French uh, mm -hmm. online which is not even going very well however <laughs> yeah so yes so how can we <laughs> educate yeah, how can we tell them to take advantage of that so first and foremost I think we should uh, expose them to what is out there yes because one cannot think beyond what they know. Mm -hmm. So first, show them what is out there. Make them understand the opportunities out there and give them the opportunities. Don't just blast them out and like, oh, you can do this, this. Show them why it's important to engage in those French lessons, those driving lessons, online AI, you know, there's a lot of things that, is, that are happening. Yes. Yeah, people are mimicking other people in different ways. So, yes. yeah, so teach them, expose them to these opportunities and then make them understand. Okay, first and foremost, let them be open to you in regards to what they want to be in life. By knowing what someone is aspiring to be or what their goals are will help you know how to direct them to the good opportunities out there. So after list listing all the opportunities available, understand where they come from, where they want to go. How is their future like? Are they futuristic? After that, expose them to select. Let them be selective and get the opportunities. Yeah. Okay. We, we did a research some time back, maybe in 20. 15, I can't remember, 2017, on how many Kenyan women use the internet. And we found, and we were just doing it in Nairobi, mm -hmm. we found only 30%. And among the 30%, when you listen to what they're doing online, it was like, hmm, you know. So we also now went on a campaign on, you know, this platform can offer more than entertainment. Mm -hmm. You understand? You can build yourself on the issue of being online. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, to you, Faith, uh, what's the biggest lessons you have learned about digital safety and how has it influenced the way you handle your information? Um, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned is I have control over what people see Excellent. concerning me. Mm -hmm. I have control over my own safety, my mental well-being, um, and yeah, so I just capitalize on that, uh, especially when I'm engaging on the different platforms. I just remind myself, you know, 
I have to take care of myself first. I have to be very cautious, uh, but not afraid. Excellent. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Not paranoid. We are not saying you should no, be paranoid. No 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 no, 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 no. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mwangi, let me ask you. How do you, young people, how, do you think young people are generally cautious with the information they share online? What changes would you like to see, especially when it comes to the issue of misinformation and disinformation? There's a lot of misinformation and we saw it during the protest. Mm -hmm. So how can also people not fall victim to that? Uh, so, no, mm -hmm. that's the first answer. Yes, people do not know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Um so I think when it comes to misinformation, um, people should, they should be, we should stop being ignorant because the only problem with having, you know, when you, you have access to something that is not always there, like the internet, people misuse it because let me use it now. I don't know about tomorrow, you know? So first and foremost, if we can have, even if the government can help us with advertising on medias and stuff about this, educating the masses, yeah, yeah civil education, education masses, literally, yeah. about this uh, gadgets, mm -hmm. how to use internet is going to help a lot in the miscommunication mm -hmm. because um, miscommunication does not only happen between people, but also between organizations and the individuals. So, like I said earlier, phishing, you know, when you, when numerous emails are sent to a large, uh, many people and about a specific company, and people are interested in this company, let me say, for instance, UN, mm. you know, mm. a lot of people, when you, why do you want to aspire UN, Safari, you know, big companies mm. and the messages in your email about how you can be part of, only for them to get your info. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing. How do you identify wrong and right messages? Mm. And identification isn't easy. And especially if you're not exposed, you won't know. You will just give out your info. I mean, before, let me use like the the example I gave earlier. Before Safaricom came up with that one number mm. that everyone is using, if you, you're you not called from this, don't pick. That's not Safaricom. What was happening? A lot of um, Fraud. scammers, yes. Yeah, because I'm from Safaricom. Um, your app, your, no, your line has is not updated. You should do this and this. And while you do that, your money, their finances gone, you know, information gone. So they're going to use your name to help steal <laughs> from other people. And I don't know how they do that, but they take your, the contact list that you do have. They use those particular people in your contact list. Mm -hmm. They don't use your <laughs> name in other places. So, yeah. We should really look yeah, at that. <laughs> yeah. And also the issue of fact-checking. Before mm -hmm. you share information, please find out it's true, especially in mm -hmm. this age of AI. You know, we like th these gadgets have made us so excited. It's like somebody, you want to forward information even without thinking. Yeah. You understand? So always do fact-checking. You know, especially right now when there's so much um, happening in our country. You know, find out, go online, even Google. If you have mm -hmm. to, there are so many also fact-checking apps so that we also don't fail, fall victim of the issue of uh, dis uh, disinformation and misinformation because it has caused a lot of issues, you know. Anyway, as we come to the tail end of this conversation now that is Cybersecurity Month, what is your takeaway? What is your uh, key point that you want to put out there for young people like yourselves? Um, I feel like we need to be very vigilant. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on, but there's also good. Good, yes. There's good and there's and we need to find a balance. And so we really need to stay informed. I like platforms like yours because they offer people the opportunity to learn about cybersecurity so that we are not paranoid. We are working or we are operating these platforms from a place of knowledge and and that's the best place that's the safest because you know what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. and so yeah we need to 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 just be careful and um utilize all the resources we have as we go and and stay informed stay informed yes. utilize the resources that you have yes have a growth mindset let's not be rigid i know it all mm. a lot 
like one time this this time you know how to deal with a particular app the next minute there's something else yeah. that has come up that is better than what you're dealing with let's develop a mind uh, a growth mindset and grit mm-hmm. because like she said earlier this thing, the social media is good but it has its own challenges so how do you persevere during the challenges mm-hmm. that's what i'll say yeah growth mindset and um, digital safety is very dynamic the threats we are going uh, through today even in five months we could be going through something are different mm-hmm. that's why even us as trainers we always have to keep updating ourselves to reading yeah. because we are not talking about the same uh, things anymore so educate yourself on the issue of digital safety take advantage of the online uh, platform use it to to your advantage mm-hmm. at the same time uh, i like saying that um, there is a saying the most connected generation is the loneliest generation yeah. know when to put these gadgets down, down. Mm-hmm. you know like let's not use l- lose the human interaction because we are losing that yeah. you know somebody was telling me the other day like oh, i don't like it when someone calls me just send me a voice note <laughs> you know mm-hmm. like that's where we've gotten like of send a voice note or say, text me you know yeah. you or you even find find people in the same house sending each other's messages you know <laughs> yeah. and it is happening in our yeah. homes you know <laughs> So <laughs> let's not lose the human connection because nothing can more be more nothing can replace that yeah. but if we're not careful technology look at ai mm. you know so let's let's try and know where to draw the line yeah. you talked about mental health also self care take time out of this gadget make it a point like every week you you decide on sunday afternoon i will not you touch my phone you know or i will not spend more than 4 hours in a day or 3 hours in a day when i'm online yeah. you know and also be very purposeful you say like i want to learn something new every week mm-hmm. because all the resources are online mm-hmm. you know so yeah so thank you so much for availing time take this information back to the people you are dealing with and let's continue this conversation because i was saying um october is cyber security month but doesn't mean that we talk we stop talking about cyber security yeah. after october mm-hmm. because is something our lives are online now we cannot we can it's a, it's a place now we have to be some some people are, don't like it but they have to be there yeah. so now that because we have to be there we have to keep ourselves informed yeah. so th- thank you so much for making the time thank you so much for making the time and yeah let's keep the conversation going yeah thank you, thank you. So as you can see I had Gen Zs in the house as I said is their time is their season and we we just wanted to know how they take care of the information online what precautions uh they take and we want them to track this information to where they uh to the people that they work with young people like themselves so thank you so much for joining us see you in the next episode